Editing data on a tablet in the field is an efficient way of doing data collection. However, there's lots to be said about doing editing at the office. Um, and the editing tools in the GIS desktop is much superior to what we get in the art collector. So often we need to also edit data on a desktop um, or perhaps only do that if we are working with data that we can identify on scanned images or old maps or whatever. So like everything else in uh, ArcMap there's lots of ways of doing it. Um, start editing. Um, personally I would uh, like to start by going up and saying right clicking and then giving me the editor toolbar. This editor toolbar will automatically appear if you right click on a layer, maybe I've got only one layer, and then say edit feature, then this editor toolbar also will start edits. So whatever way you do it, um, you'll get into this uh, editor. In the editor you can also go start editing and now you are in edit mode. So um, I here have my data that I'm using also for the um, tablet data collection uh, using our collector um, and I have some buildings I drew uh, in the field using the field tablet or um, and I, some of my buildings I've got my some example poster points. If I want to add some more data, I probably want to have a something that I can use as my background to draw on top of to locate whatever I'm doing. So I just load in my, I don't want to do that, I simply go in my art catalog and folder connection to add my raster demo there and I'll load in my uh, Roskilde image here, this covers university. So, um, and of course we can see if I make this uh, hatched again, that this was not really so well delimited, it was a bit slobbish done. Um, and there are also some additional buildings Of course I could go over and then add all the buildings um, by hand, but this is one of the situations where I have got some data already, so why have that problem? Why shouldn't I just go and load my buildings for the entire region? So from this data set here, go and say buildings. which will give me some fine uh, buildings, hopefully. And all of these buildings here, they are of course been delimited very precisely. So um, I think I'll use them instead of using my own buildings. And then I can edit that data set. First of all, I want to choose which buildings I want to have and uh, I just zoom out a bit. Oh, that was way too much. Um, Sorry there. And um, go and export my buildings. So choose my buildings, right click on them, and say export. The important thing here is I go up under export all features, no, only those that I see on my screen and then I can export them to my data collection database uh, and I'll just save them up here and call them buildings or official buildings perhaps official buildings um, so what I'm doing now is that I'm creating my own local copy of 
this data set so it's not I'm not going to interfere with the um, original data set I'm going to create my own local copy of only those buildings that I have in this area and then I can get rid of if I change to this yeah 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 it's working on it so I'll add my new buildings and get rid of those official ones so these are my new buildings and here I can start working with them we had this building here we had some buildings that have been demolished so I can start out by going in and changing its uh, attributes there are probably oh, far too many attributes for me to use here so I can change them in here or I might even go into our catalog and go down to my rook demo my rook poster there and there and uh, official buildings and say properties and find its fields there and then get rid of all those I just don't need uh, basically most of them delete 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 so I'm just getting rid of all of those uh, ones that I don't want and I have got one called status there but I'll just delete that one and create a new one that I called demolished and I think I'm going to do it as a short integer because hopefully I have a domain down here already demolished so I got them now I got them cleaned up got rid of all the attributes in want add my own one and now I can start editing on them and uh, here I've got two choices I could of course just delete them um, or I could add the attribute of it in this case I'll start my editor it's running and I will make sure that I'm editing in this layer here so that continue so now I'm editing in this layer and I can choose this building here and we have got two here I've got my own version and I've got um, the official one let's get rid of my own one uh, so oops da. now I've only got the official one if I edit that I want to change the attributes I need access to the attribute window which is this one up here so I park my attribute data here and here I have my demolished and I can say this building has been demolished um, if I wanted to get rid of a building if you can do that the one I did my field work on that one I simply select it and press the delete button backspace button that should get rid of that. Uh, didn't really do it. Okay. Right. If I want to get rid of that not so well delimited uh, building of my own, I'll have to click on my building layer, my own buildings, and say that I'm going to do edit of those. So start editing. I am in editing, but I'm not editing that layer at the moment. Save my edits to the previous one. Yes, I want to do that. 
and then start editing this layer. So we can only edit one layer at a time in ArcMap. So I get rid of, so I can see better. I can choose the last layer here and I can press my delete button and off it's gone. I've still got one down here. Um, and I could have deleted that also. Like that. If I wanted to create new buildings, um, let's say I bring back the official ones and I want to uh, start editing this layer. So I just say start editing. It asks me, do I want to stop editing the other layer? Yes, I do. Do I want to save the edits? Yes, I do. And then continue editing this layer. So here I've got, uh, sorry, this building down here where uh, it's a bit complex. Use this one instead. So I've got this building here and I want to edit that. So first of all, I just delete it to start with. And I now want to show how to create features in ArcMap using its tools. Um, I don't believe that is part, it's a appendix, that building there. So I won't have it as my real building. What I want to do is that I want to go to my editing and use this one here, that is create feature. So this brings up this dialog box up here, as we saw when we did um, our uh, templates uh, in the other video. And here, and using templates is a good idea by the way, I'll choose this one and I'll create it as a polygon. So I'll try and find the footprint so it's probably a bit in compared to there. So something like this. So this is probably the footprint of the building. I now have that hole in the middle. So what I do is that I right click and say finish part. I have these two options, finish sketch and finish part. Finish sketch says that the whole drawing is finished. Finished part that says that I'm finished drawing a ring in my building. So I say finish part and now try and delimit the inner hole here. So I think like this. So now I've cut away the center part of it here. And I can then right click and say I'm done doing the sketch, finished sketch. So now I've drawn this building back into what was the official building data set. So, to take it in PowerPoint, to, we uh, can go into edit mode by the toolbar and it will typically ask us what uh, data sets to edit. You can edit more than one layer in ArcMap, but you can only edit the layers that are at the same source. So the, or the layers from a database or the layers from a folder. And if the, you have data different folders, you can only edit at the same time the layers that are located in the same folder. So you can do some layers at the, uh, edit some layers simultaneously, but they have to be located at the same place. We have our edit tools. We have our attribute and we have our create feature windows. So these windows here, and I normally like to have them um, tab like this, so I can change between my attributes, so I can go in and I can say, choose this one and say, no, that's not demolished. Um, stop that. So, um, attribute table as one tab, and create features and other tabs and go back and forth. That's my favorite way of having it. You can, of course, drag them out and have them underneath each other if there's room. Uh, so not like that. Um, whoop, look, like that. Um, which, and you could probably arrange your data so you could say edit and then choose it and then edit the attributes. But personally, I like to have them on underneath each other as tab windows go away um, so that I can change between them down there at the bottom so I can say attribute windows create features 
but that's how I organize it. If you need to edit the coordinates of them, you have this sketch property. Uh, I showed that when creating GCP points, ground control points, and I can here go in and I can edit the individual vertexes either by dragging them. So this was this one over here. Or I can go in and edit the coordinates here. Um, so different possibilities of working with the individual parts. If I need an additional one, I right click and I can say insert vertex and then I can have an extra little part there. So I got these possibilities for working with my vertexes also, these points that I have added. Um, but that's typically not, um, you typically don't use that window. Uh, but you do typically need to double click your building and then that will give you access to adding these vertexes. So if I decide, okay, I want this one to include it, what I do is that I'll right click here, sorry, I'll duk -duk, and I'll right click and say insert vertex and do it again here, insert vertex, insert a vertex, and then I can drag this out there and I can insert a vertex and drag this out like this. So I can relatively easily change my shapes if I need that. Um, so the attribute window and the create feature windows are practical to have and I like to have them on top of each other. If we uh, do uh, editing of um, of complex shapes there are some different tools we can do. use. As we draw along you might see the editing as be a drawing, a um, quite sometimes think of it as a rubber band. Each time you click you fix the rubber band until you're finished and you finish by right clicking or double clicking and then or right clicking and saying finish sketch. You can also use this finish uh, part if you want to make a hole in it. So if you want to make a more complex one, instead of choosing your finish sketch, you choose a um, finish part of your work. Um, another very useful tool for digitizing in ArcMap is the Trace tool. To demonstrate this, I have loaded a garden data set and if you remember from the aerial photograph there is a garden in the center of this building and I want to create that building but I don't want to I want to make sure that it in t exactly matches the building itself so I want to use this tracing tool and what I do first of all is I ensure that my building is selected now my building is selected it's part of selection set and the tracing tool Tra can trace in the selection set. I choose my garden layer and say I want to make a polygon and then I go up and ensure that I'm using the trace tool. I can click on my building to start and ArcMap just says I'm just looking at what could be uh, uh, traced and now I can move my mouse along the edge and you can see that there's a short little black dangly line it's probably easier as I go down here. You can see I'm not clicking at any point I'm simply following the line all the way up and all the way back. And once I'm finished, I can click and say either I want to stop tracing or that I just want to finish my line. So I just did a normal click here. So now I'm finished and I have an exact match of that building. So I have a garden layer. However, that is a bit of a doing things double. I first made the hole and then I traced that hole. We could do that in one workflow. If I get rid of my elements here and this one here. Another bit more efficient way of creating a building with a garden in it would be first to create a building outline. So I just choose my building and click where my fit, the footprint of it is like that and then say I'm finished and not, not just by finished part 
but I'm finished the sketch so I've made the entire building it would be a practical if the building was uh, hatched so I could see what I was doing inside it like that and then I'll start creating a garden on top of it <clears throat> like that and let's finish that sketch also however if I now use my eye tool and ask what I've got here it will say that there was both a garden and if I say all layers then there's top layer all layers and click there it will tell me that in a moment when it's finished it's very complex operation that there's both a garden and a building and an old photograph at that location but I want to get rid of the building underneath the garden so what I can do is I can go up in my editor mode here and I can simply do a clip what clip does is that it will take and cut whatever's underneath my uh, object that is selected in this case my garden so I say clip and I don't want any buffer I want them to match exactly and it has now done it if I turn off my garden you can now see that there's no building in here and if, if I turn off my garden again and use my eye tool to ask what is here It will again say now, there's only a garden and an aerial photograph. So, if you are going to create an island in a lake, you first create the lake, then you create the island, and then you, while the island is selected, use the clip tool simply to clip through the layer. So those are basically the important tools um, in uh, editing. Um, we have sketches, we say finished part if you want to create a new ring uh, be it inside or outside it and um, we can use finished sketch when we are completely finished and the basic rules is that if there is a uneven number of sketches on top of each other there will be an object if there is an even number there will be um, a hole so if you do something really complex, such as this thing down here, uh, with lots of them on top of each other, then we have, at this location, we have one, two, three sketches at that, and that's an uneven number, so therefore we have an object. While here we only got two sketches on top of each other, so it's an even number, and therefore there's a hole. So you can draw those sketches on top of each other really or these parts on top of each other really into well large complexity um, but typically you only need to draw a object and the hole inside the object or two objects um, or areas next to each other that represents one object and finally if you are created more than one you can merge them together if you want to have two geometries to become one object you can use the union that will take two objects and create a new feet of the, the two. You can use the intersect and you can use the one that is typically used, the clip. Um, that can be used so if you have drawn a lake then you can draw the island and then you can clip the island onto the lake so that you don't have to draw that line twice. So that was all about editing in ArcMap. Hope you liked it. Bye.